guys, how's it going? So today we are in the studio for this recap video because it is really breezy outside. It has been for the last three days and um, the guys are here really tearing up our front yard. It's actually looking good, surprisingly. I think that I had to see the stuff come out and the grass come out for it to start looking like a continuous space. Um, so I don't know, the vision is, feels like it's coming alive, even though there's so much, much destruction, but there's a lot of equipment moving around and beeping and stuff. So we thought it would be better to be in here. Um, anyway, Russell made it in here too. And he's like slowly creeping in <laughs> on the scene here. You can stay right here, but I just can't have you like up in my business. So let's just jump right into last week's videos. The first one was planting out winter, sowing seedlings. In that video, I took all of the water jugs I started seeds in um, and planted out, well, all but two of those water jugs I planted out, um, as well as some delphiniums. <laughs> Look at this, Aaron. He's like, pay attention to me right now. Hey, I don't know what the deal is right now. Yes, I see you. <laughs> I, I totally don't know where I was at, but I was also in that video, I planted out some delphinium seedlings that I had started from seed and had potted up and was keeping out in the greenhouse to grow on. Um, it was really fun because I decked out the area around our chicken coop pretty much. Like there's room to put one little layer of annuals right in the front um, for some extra color, but I was able to deck out that space with all those seedlings, which really cost pennies to grow. Top comment from that video was from Marianne. Your channel is a perfect example of do what you love and the money will follow. <laughs> Do you, the SNL? Was it uh, Melissa McCarthy? Yeah. Have you ever read the, the pizza, book? The pizza eater lady? The pizza. Do what you love and the money will follow. <laughs> Didn't have to read it, just... You close that book, put, put it back right. on the shelf. <laughs> How great is it that you lo your love of planting, growing, and tending to plants has overflowed and blessed so many of your loyal viewers. It's so sweet to read. Uh, you touch so many with your pure enthusiasm. We simply love you and your family. Like, you know, I, I have to say, like, it is very it is honestly true like we never intended this to be any type of a business or like that wasn't what we set out to accomplish we set out to like feed your need to film something yeah. <laughs> that was like all it was aaron was so interested in just the whole the editing whole, yeah the I, whole I, part. I bought a camera and i just needed i needed something to be able to edit so you have to film something and i thought well should we tell them about our first filming attempt <laughs> it was bad <laughs> it was it was bad it was bad. We ended up not filming that day. Yeah. Yeah. And I injured, you drop I injured something myself. On your foot? Yeah. <laughs> I did. Uh, Anthony said, How do I know if I overwatered my tomato plant? Well, first off, you'll see that your tomato plant, like with any rotting plant, it'll start to look like it's wilting, um, not due to lack of water, but due to too much. So it's just starting to kind of wilt and rot. Um, a lot of times the leaves will turn yellow, especially during, toward the bottom part of the plant and they'll start dropping off the plant. Um, the leaves may even de develop some like blister looking things toward the bottom of the plant. Um, and then you may see some cracking in your fruit. That's usually due to fluctuations in water though, not like a constant water. Um, your plant also may not uh, set that many fruit, um, but it'll have a ton of uh, growth in leaves rather than in fruit. So those are a few things you can look for. Nancy said about 10 seconds in, I see amaryllis over your shoulder. Is it time to clean off the leaves and harden in the cold? I cut the bloom stalks off and have been letting the plants grow. Am I out of sync? So here's what we do in our zone six. So typically we have them bloom, you know, around Christmas time. And then I just treat them as a house plant, um, leaving the leaves on. They're really pretty. I mean, the strappy leaves are really beautiful, especially if you've got multiple bulbs in a container because um, it'll really get full and, and lush looking. Um, and then we move them outside for the growing season. So once we're well past danger of frost, we can move them out into a protected spot and treat them just as a potted plant outside. And then before it freezes in the fall, or rather six to eight weeks before you wanna start their bloom cycle, you want to um, bring them into somewhere, which we did this this last fall with my amaryllis. We brought them in from the sun porch. We put them in the basement where it stays a lot cooler. So right around 50 degrees. And I can't remember the exact temperature range. We'll pop it on the screen. Um, but you wanna put them somewhere as cool as possible without freezing um, and leave the leaves on though because the bulb will suck all the energy from those leaves to feed the bulb for a new bloom. Um, I did water them once once I, once I got them into that cool location and then you just leave them there for six to eight weeks. You want it to be dark, you want it to be cool and then at the end of that six to eight weeks you bring them back out somewhere a little bit warmer which I kind of screwed up this year. I brought them up to the back sun porch with the intention of moving them out here to the studio and I forgot because we had Samantha right around that time. It was just one of those things that 
slipped through the cracks and it got cold like in the teens and our sun porch is not heated and I did not have a heater running and I thought for sure they had succumbed to the weather. Um, but we decided to move them out to the cold frame anyway a little bit l later, like a month or two later, and they're growing, and one of them has a bloom stock. So what you would do is, you know, after that six to eight weeks, you bring them out somewhere warmer, start watering them again. Um, usually water once, and then you start watering more frequently once you see, see some green growth happening. But anyway, it's kind of a convoluted, that's probably really convoluted instructions. We've done videos about it before. We'll link those down below. Might be a little bit easier to follow. Carlene said, when you update your merch, will you please add five gallon buckets so we can romance the ordinary? How could we make a five gallon bucket oh, rom man. romantical? You know what, we could do it, but I think it would be expensive for shipping. $50 five gallon bucket? Yeah. <laughs> I just go down to your local hardware store and pick one up yeah. for like, what, two bucks? Or yeah. I don't know what they are, three, four? I don't. Dollars, um, cheap. Uh, yeah, I don't know. They pay for themselves over and over and over again. We have a stack of like five of them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm using all five at the same time. They come in super handy for so many different things. Yeah. Wanda says, it's almost end of April and the gazebo is still there. <laughs> 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 What's going on with it? May 10th, if it is not gone by May 10th, then... Well, I told the city because they, they pushed it back one more time and... <laughs> one keep... more time and then one more time after that and then yeah, another I time after telling that. It. Well, one more time as of the last recap where I was talking about how they kept pushing it back. Mm -hmm. um, so I told them like the 10th, I think is a Friday and I was like, okay, we're gonna have Chad come on that following Monday. And if the gazebo is still there, he's gonna... his you know, big excavator is just going to tear the thing down. So, and I don't want that to happen, no. but we also have Although it might stuff be, shipping in from the UK. It might be easier for people to, because we'd still try to find a home for all the lumber, for sure. Yeah. It'd be easier to rehome the lumber than it would be to rehome the entire gazebo. But hopefully we don't have to do that. I mean, it's been like It sounds like months. everything is uh, scheduled for the 10th. Um, I guess the one the one thing is that on the sixth, the city council needs to uh, vote on some something about moving it because the dollar amount to move it was more than they had expected, and so they they wanted the city council to approve it, oh. which um, the public works director thinks that it'll be fine that they'll approve it, but it was just one of those things where it's like, you know, you don't want to push things through if it's above a certain dollar amount. So anyway, the man. amount of man hours. <laughs> Because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of absurd. Um, like I, I feel like we're almost becoming a burden to the city by having bit. this thing moved. Yeah. But we we just simply so much offered for donating. it. That's all we did is we just, yeah, we offered, just offered it, it. as a donation, and yeah. we didn't know how much it would take. You know what the ramifications were of moving. No, it. and that's on them in the end. Like they can gather up the info and decide and what they, they, they want to do. And they could have said no. We weren't trying to right. pull their leg to no. take it. Uh uh. Anyway, so May 10th is the date that it's scheduled for. We'll see what happens. Nicole said, I wanted to ask, and I know you've covered it in another video, but I can't locate it, so sorry for that. What size garden auger do you recommend for one gallon cans? I just ordered 20 boxwoods and they're going to be one gallon cans. That sounds fun, 20 boxwoods. Um, you know what we actually thought about doing? Because this is not the, you're not the only one who asked that question. There were several of you this past week even that asked what size of auger to get. We thought about just going out to the new property and lining up all of our augers, digging holes with all of them, and then showing you what size a can fits in each hole. So you can kind of get an idea. I do think though for that specific application, the Proven Winners Jumbo would, would probably be about the right size. You'd probably have to ream the hole out a little bit though. I don't know yeah, that it'd be- Yeah, but one gallon isn't that big. Yeah, but you kind of want the sides to be a little fluffy too. You don't want to just That's like true. create a single hole that the plant barely fits down in. Yeah, you could certainly go with a bigger size. I don't know what size the jumbo is. I don't even think Proven Winner says. It's some- It's like a custom size. It's a custom size. For um, their bigger cans. Yeah, you could go with um, a power planter like seven inch. Uh, but but then, then you'd need a bigger drill, yeah, and, and that's not worth it for 20 plants. Right. So the jumbo would probably be the best way to go. Yeah, so we thought maybe we would show you, like, if you get bigger augers, they are awesome, but then it requires a huge drill. And I'm used and to doing... it's expensive. Yeah, and I'm used to doing heavy work, but that auger is, like, every time I use it, it never is as bad as I anticipate it. It's going to be, like, in terms of heaviness and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it needs to be heavy in order to, like, kind of send it down a bit, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that that's for everyone. Yeah. Exactly. 
No, I think it's just more for like commercial applications or um, if you buy a property and you know that you're going to be planting a lot of things on it. Like you know, we over, are. Over yeah. The, yeah, over the years. Then, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons that I love power planter stuff is that I think they have a lifetime guarantee. I've taken them up on it once. We had one uh, auger that sheared off. Oh, yeah. And I let them know and they just sent out a new one. Right. Um, so I like that. And then they, but they are pretty heavy duty. They're way more heavy duty than any other auger that we've ever used. Mm -hmm. Like how many of those cheapo ones have you bent? A lot. I stopped using them yeah. because it wasn't even worth it. It's not worth it to buy the cheap augers. It's not. Yeah. Oh, especially if you have rocky soil, which I know a lot of you guys kind of complain about rocky soil, which we don't have. Thankfully, my parents do though. Yeah, but we haven't had a whole lot of issue with the augers at your parents' no. house with the rocky well, soil. Well, we just used it this last week. I did, the big yeah. one. And it was like... But my parents have 30 years under their belt fixing that soil. That's too. true. But, man, there's still some areas where you have to get like a pry bar out. Yeah, there um, is. Or what do you call that? A digging bar? It's just like a long rod yeah. that's heavy. Yeah. Uh, Debbie said, where do you get the olive from Andrews? Oh, yeah. In that video, I also potted up my olive tree. I bought an olive tree at Andrews. Um, that is where I got it. And yes, they do have more left down there. Um, anyway... Yeah, so I'm learning about that tree. Uh, I potted it, watered it that day, and I have not watered it since. So it's been several days, it's still holding quite a bit of moisture. I might have to switch the soil out because I did ask you guys, you know, those of you who have grown olive trees, let me know what you, um, what you do, give me some tips. And so I'm thinking I might even use the cact cactus and citrus succulent mm. soil um, that doesn't hold on to quite as much moisture. So I may be doing a soil swap here soon. Uh, Jennifer said, I had some eight dahlia tubers that have grown and look so ready to go in the ground, but I don't know where to plant. Full sun. Does anyone know if they do good in containers? Yes, they do. But keep in mind that a lot of dahlia plants, not some, but a lot of them get very big. So you want to make sure that if you're putting them in a pot, that pot can, um, like the ratio is going to look proper. Uh, like if you have a dahlia that gets four to five feet tall, you're going to need a good sized pot to make it look right. And also to keep that plant upright, you need a lot of weight down there. Because uh, if you get any wind or anything like that, it might get too hot top heavy in a smaller container. Um, you also want to consider staking options in your container. Um, there are a lot of shorter dahlias though. I just don't know what kind you have. The shorter dahlias are always great in containers. Next video is 15 perennials every garden should have. And I just thought every once in a while it's good to run through some of those plants um, that are just workhorses in the garden. Uh, because we, we spend a lot of our time focusing on brand new plants that are coming out because it's exciting. It's really fun to try out new stuff but that's not the backbone of our garden. It might become that later on, but the backbone of our garden, and especially for beginners who are just starting out, it's good to have the knowledge, I guess, of what those kind of plants are. And the list is long. I mean, 15 is a very mm -hmm. short list, but I was trying to just be very concise. I don't know how long that video even was. I think it was kind of long. Uh, but anyway, that's what it was about. I did five types of perennials that are good in the sun, five that were good in the shade, and then five that are really good kind of in between. Brampton Gardner said, this was the top comment, my new slogan is, leave me alone and let me be beautiful. What plant did I say that about? I say so many things that I don't even remember or... Yeah, I don't remember you saying that. Well, it's probably in reference to like a sedum. Yeah. Just plant me and leave me the heck alone and yeah. then I will do good. <laughs> uh, Misty said, I love your gardens. I live in New Jersey. Is there any way you do video consulting? I included this question because we get asked a lot, and it is one of my least. You don't even know how much we get asked. To you do. don't even see all the emails that come through. Oh, no, I don't see all the emails that come through. Aaron, kind of, um, you wade through all of those, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, video consulting is a hard pass. Sorry about that. It's like one of my least favorite things to do. In fact, when we started Garden Answer way back, I'm saying way back, like I. Well, you know what? It, it was it, like six yeah. or seven years ago at this point. Yeah. That's way back. Kind of. Way back in the good old days of Garden Dancer, <laughs> my mom, when I was, because uh, I think my parents were trying to wrap their brain around what we were even doing and why we were doing, because it was taking a tremendous amount of effort on our part. Like we were just busy every evening and all weekends because we just worked. Um, anyway, she was like, so what's the goal of Garden Dancer? Like, what are you trying to do here? Um, you can, because at that point we were just bleeding money into it. We weren't making anything, right. you know, it was just like a complete labor of love at that point. I um, mean, it still is, but at least we're compensated for it this, at this point. Um, but she was like, yeah, what's your goal? And I just said to say no to landscape plans. Like, I want to be able to look at you and say, I am not doing another landscape plan 
down at the garden center ever again. I hated doing them. So anyway, that's what I told her. You don't even like doing them here. No, I feel I like, like you I drag don't. your feet. It, it shuts me down. Like I like to see an area evolve. I like to try things out. I like to take a slower approach at it. Yeah. And it's really hard unless it's a formal garden. I can do formal gardens any day of the week. Mm -hmm. I love to do formal gardens. It makes sense to me. It brings me peace. I like that formality. Mm -hmm. um, and like the Versailles garden, looking out at that every morning, like the fact that that's the garden that I have my coffee in that room usually, I love it because it brings me peace because there's not a ton of fluff that's like needing attention. There's not deadheading. There isn't something that needs to be cut back or whatever. There's just beautiful structure and simplicity and But you also space. like the cottage feel too. Well, you have that, but you have that kind of... Um, Juxtaposition? Yeah, you have both of those feels in your garden, but very... You, I can tell you don't like timelines for one, which totally does not work with my personality <laughs> because... Uh, We've because both I'm the had infrastructure to compromise guy. a little bit on that. Like yeah. I'm, I'm the one who wants. To, so you have a timeline because it's like, well, you have to know what you're going to be doing so that you can prepare for it with water and power. Because mm -hmm. like, if you want a fountain out here somewhere, that has to be powered by something. Right. So you need electricity out there. And let's trench while it's open. Instead yeah, and of, you don't want to be trenching right. after the fact. Which because, I like that part of your personality is so good for me. And it's stuff like it doesn't even imposition me that you want to do that. I love it. Because I, you think about things that I wouldn't think about, and who cares about trench? I trench all day long if you want to up there right now, but I would be so frustrated at myself later if I would have realized, you know, like, oh, I do want to fountain there, and I got to wreck a garden in order to get to it. Yeah, um, that would be frustrating. I'd be mad at myself for that, for lack of foresight. Um, but yeah, you would like to have like a game plan for the entire like this plant is going here, this plant is going here. Well, and I don't I don't mind how long it takes to get there, but I do like a game plan. I think one of the things that made me the most happy was when you drew that um, plan originally. It took you like two minutes. Well, and the thing is, is that I did it just to like Appease get me? you off my back. <laughs> I was like, here, here's a sketch. And that's what it ended up becoming. Yeah. Like it just kind of like, let's go with it. Yeah. And I'm loving it. I'm loving how it's coming together. That was kind of, I think if you do that, no, don't overthink. You just kind of like go with your gut. And that was my gut because that was like a two minute sketch, you yeah. know? Okay. So here's the question. If, if somebody came to you and said, would you help me with a garden design? I want it to be uber formal. And, um, here's a blank check. Do you think you would enjoy doing that? Even, uh -huh. even then? No, in fact, I, I emailed Klaus. I'm like, Hey Klaus. <laughs> Do you want to come over and design around my Hartley? And I, he, he wants to. Really? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Like, I would be totally happy if if I, like, Klaus... So even you want to outsource some of the some garden of it. design? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I've never done that before. Yeah. So it would, it would maybe be hard and maybe Klaus would hate my guts at the end. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you think you'd be the kind of customer who changes everything about the plan? Well... Because I know you hated that, right? When you would do a plan and everybody would be like, oh. Like, I don't like yellow. Yeah, you I know? don't like, like yellow. Oh, you don't know what you like. Just put it in your garden. You'll love it. They would they'd change like, um, like big parts of your plan that mm -hmm. made the whole thing cohesive. Mm -hmm. And so you'd be like, don't you tell anybody that I designed this for oh, you because you so changed it. so many times. Or they would take the plan and the plants and everything was fine. And then we'd drive by. Like we'd go on a drive and we'd drive by. And I'd be like, oh. They put everything in the wrong spot? Yeah, like, that's not my plan at all. Like, please don't tell anybody I helped you with that, because that's wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't put a tree that close to your house, or whatever the case yeah. may be. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's a weird thing. I just like to plant stuff. I like to grow things. I like, I do love it when a garden is designed well. And sometimes I nail it, and sometimes I don't. Um, it's, it's all an evolving learning process for me. And I did not go to school for that or anything. And I feel like, I, th I feel like my major hangup is I like hardscaping and, and foresight, thinking about those things, um, I, intimidate me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, M Kitchen says, should I be proud or embarrassed that I either have now or have had at some time all of these plants? You should absolutely be proud of yourself. They're awesome plants. <laughs> the more the merrier. Uh, Vora said, what are the burgundy plants at 453 on the left? That is Radiculus coleus. It's an amazing plant. Ro uh, Romy said, where do you get most of your perennials? So as you know, we work with proven winners a lot. And so we get a lot of them sent directly from the grower, like from Walter's Gardens, who grows on the perennials or um, develops the perennials rather for 
Proven Winners. We get a lot from Spring Meadow Nursery, which is the home of Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. And so those kinds of things get sent into us, like if we're trying new varieties out. Um, I do put in a plant order usually once a year. And so we have like specific projects lined up that we'll have plants sent in for. And I do get a ton of plants at my parents' garden center. I mean, you guys know, I'm there like almost every single day and I find things that I love. And um, so that's typically where I get them. I do pick stuff up randomly at other garden centers. Occasionally we do like mm -hmm. to go to other garden centers quite a bit. Like we'll go over to Boise for the day and like, that's just what we end up doing. Like we're trying to take a break from our real life and we end up doing kind of our real life. Well, it's hard when uh, what your work is what you like to do. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's hard to disconnect. It's mm -hmm. like, well, I like to do it. Right. So we just look at plants all day. Uh, Cynthia said, is that DeWalt drill the 20 amp that Aaron was using? I bought the Proven Winners auger and need to purchase a new cordless drill. So for the smaller augers, it is the 20 volt, yeah. right? Which video was this in? Uh, 15 perennials every garden should have. Oh, hmm. Uh, so I'd... we have two different drills. That's easy enough. The smaller, smaller one, which is what you would use with most augers, is the 20 volts. But even, even DeWalt has multiple 20 volts, and I honestly don't know the difference between them. Can you link the one we have down below? Yeah, I can. There's, okay. like, there's like a hammer drill version, and that's the one that we have. And it's way more powerful than like the... There's like a $99 one, mm. and that one is not as powerful. Oh. But like for a smaller auger, if you've got nice soil, it might work. Yeah. We if just you don't have, have experience with it. If you have nice soil, you don't need an auger. True. So. I don't know. I use the auger to dig holes for my potatoes in tilled soil. Because yeah, we have the tall one and I didn't a, have to bend over a million a times. Nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, so if that's your only application, it could work. We'll link the one that we have down below. And then the bigger one is the stud and joist. Is that mm -hmm. right? Stud and joist drill. One day I will remember that like confidently, but stud and joist drill is the big one um, mm -hmm. that we use for the big augers. Um, I am Ziano. I am Ziano. Would you still post part two of the greenhouses that was sent by the subscribers? That is definitely on the list, but it's like one of those videos. Well, Ken, Aaron's face. <laughs> Ken started working on it. Okay, I started working on it and then I passed it off to Ken and then he, I think he finished it actually and I just oh. need to review it and then we can post it. So Part two, we never filmed a part two. Uh, I yeah, never did. It was just going to be like a slideshow. Oh, so I, I'm not doing any commentary on it? Well, you can if you want. Oh, but I kind of want to look at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're just going to take the photos and just make kind of like a slideshow out of it. Oh, well, I like that idea too. Yeah. We'll have some sort of version of a part two at some point because there were so many excellent submissions. Um, Don said, uh, can you tell me why some of my perennials rot out in the center? My Coreopsis and Shasta daisies do this after a couple years in the ground. They're not getting tons of water. Well, my first, my first thought is crown or root rot. When that happens, a lot of times the center of your plant will die out and turn brown. And that's a fungal issue and it's usually caused by too much water being held onto in the soil. Like even if you don't realize it, um, it could be a little bit too wet in that area. Sometimes though with perennials, and I see this a lot with grasses too, like the grass starts spreading and the center kind of dies out and it's like this ring of grass. And a lot of times you just need to kind of dig up your plant and, and chunk it up into different sections and transplant it. Um, so just divide your plant. So it, I don't know, it might be worth a, a little bit of a closer look at the center of your plant and maybe even uh, take a picture and take it down to your local garden center and have somebody who you know can like see it um, look at it for you just to make sure it's not crown or root rot because in that case it's something that you want to address um, if it's just as simple you know as simple as dividing the plant i mean you could definitely try that lb said you make me want to grow every single one of these quick question when will we see an update on the paris valier do you not regret do you regret putting it in that spot i do not regret putting it in that spot and i did put it in a video aaron when was that we were setting up a fountain, weren't we? And I showed the Paris Valier because it was in full bloom. Yeah. Which fountain was it? Uh, it was the uh, Spring Nymph. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I did show it in a video recently. Jesse said, plant names are so funny. My favorites are Boom Chocolata and We. Do you have any favorite funny plant names? Uh, <laughs> ones that'll make your mama blush, maybe. <laughs> Next video is planting at my parents' house. Uh, top comment, the enthusiastic gardener said the hookah and the crab apple go so well together. And that is so true. Isn't that pretty? Didn't even plan it that way. Um, but my mom, she was, she may have planned it that way, but she said, I think that it would be nice to have some hookahs down there. Um, in fact, that's why she, she called me and she said, I really want to put some little quick fires down there 
but I think that it, and if you want to like come over and take a look and we'll, you know, talk about it and stuff, um, that would be fun. Um, but I think I need some hookahs and I told her I could hook her up with some. So my parents came over and they took a look at what we have in our greenhouse and we decided on the, was it cherry truffles? Is that right? Am I... The hookah? Yeah. Did you hook her up with the plants or did she get them from Andrews? She got the hydrangeas from Andrews. Oh, I hooked okay. her up with everything else. But um, the the cherry, is it cherry truffles? Why am I not remembering it? But the color of the hookah with the color of the crab apple blooms was just so pretty at that moment in time for sure. Um, Gatiz, Gatiz. Laura, is there a song from your childhood that you remember wherever you, whenever you're in your childhood home and that brings you nostalgia? Aaron, that was a question to you as well. Okay, so for me, we listened to lots of different things, but we played a lot of bluegrass kind of music. My brother and sister, like my sister plays violin and sings. My brother sings and plays guitar. I play piano. Um, Little Mountain Church House, <laughs> Little Mountain Church is the name of the song, I think. That's one that we still play a lot. Um, I think Ricky Skaggs sings it. Uh, I can't remember who wrote it though. Um, Carl something? I don't know. Uh, John Denver, Country Roads, <laughs> Dan Kohlberg, <laughs> stuff like that. Stuff my dad listened to a lot. Um, those I hear those songs and it like takes me right back to home and it also takes me to my dad drove us to school every single day. Um, we went to a school actually that's just right down the road from us here and my dad had an old Chevy pickup and all four of us would be lined up in there and it was the type of pickup that you could pick up the uh, floor mats and it was so worn through you could see the road <laughs> like there were spots in that truck you could see the road through it but we had some good times on the way to school um, sometimes my dad there was like this little dirt road that you could go it was like I don't know who's who owns it but you, we could go off the back roads that we took to the school and like go off-roading in like huge potholes and it would throw us all over the place and we thought it was so fun and he'd do that every once in a while. But anyway, what about you? Any songs that remind you of your childhood? Um, um, <laughs> my parents would probably be horrified, but like one that comes to mind is uh, Todd Rundgren, We Gotta Get You a Woman. That was, <laughs> that was uh, one that I remember from childhood. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, there's probably others. You know, it's it's tough when you're put on the spot, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm I'm sure there's others. But that's that's one that like I remember um, like waking up in the morning. My dad would put on music loud, and it wasn't just Todd Rundgren. It was lots of other you know like '70s mm -hmm. you know things yeah. that he he'd put on. But my dad was more into like I want to say it was more like obscure '70s. Like he mm -hmm. wasn't into like classic rock '70s. Like my dad was. Yeah, your yeah. dad was more classic rock, and um, my dad listened to like different stuff. He was a DJ though for a while too, and mm -hmm. I feel like that naturally, like when you're into music, you you get into more obscure. You things. probably, you know, a lot of Chicago, which was not obscure, but uh -huh. we listened to a lot of Chicago. Really, as kids, yeah. I don't know if we did. I remember though. So Dan Fogelberg, um, oh, what's the name of the song? Uh, is it Down the Road? We had a record, and I remember when we still even lived in town. I was, like young i was under six at that point and we would put that record on and we would be like in our feety jammies i remember like we had our feety jammies on at like the little white bottoms on the feet and it, that song like it cuts loose at one point i think there's banjo in it or something and us kids would just like go to town oh yeah dance it up i remember that uh sharin said what a wonderful garden thanks for sharing with us could you please tell what is the name of the ground cover in front of the lilac so that's bishop's weed also i think called snow in the mountain it is a beast brute of a ground cover plant that will take, well, it's not even a ground cover, it grows tall, but it's kind of like a, it's a takeover, I will like take over your garden and your life if you put it somewhere where you don't want it to spread. Um, my parents have been able to control it fairly well because it's been there. It's been there since the very beginning, but it's in a shady location. And I think that because it doesn't get like 100% sun, it does keep the growth contained a little bit. Um, and they are really good about edging and I mean, they're very attentive to their garden space. So um, when you're working in it often, it's easy to easier to control stuff, but boy, it is, it is a nice lush look, almost kind of like a foresty, like undergrowth kind of plant, but oh, I will, I probably will never plant it in my garden. Mm -mm. Pink said, beautiful as usual. Are you able to tell me what type of grass is growing? It looks so green and almost like mounds. Well, it looks kind of like mounds because their, their lawn is not super, um, uh, not level, like smoothed out. Like the soil is kind of lumpy underneath. 
Don't you think? Who's? My parents, mm. their lawn. Like it's not super level. Like there's little dips in the grass um, from like where they had septic dug oh, out. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, and then it's just got like little areas that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could definitely be like, smoothed out. In yeah. fact, you know what? Now that I think about it, when I was standing out there, I was thinking, you know what? A person could bring some sand out here a and person. level this out. <laughs> I've been watching a bunch of videos on people leveling out their yards with sand. I kind of want to try it. We don't really have... Some areas, especially where, uh, like, nearby trees, uh -huh. uh, seems like the, the soil around gets really low. Hmm. So they have Kentucky bluegrass and a perennial rye blend, which is the same kind of grass that we planted along our lane. And I think that's the bulk of what we have here. It's kind of what everybody plants here. Um, it does really well. It's a very beautiful and lush looking grass. Um, yeah. And our a grass along our lane is looking a lot better. You've been, well, we have, we got one of those, uh, another one of those robo mowers. Yeah. What are they called? Um, uh, um, Husqvarna. Auto mower. Yeah. Um, we got one for up there and it's amazing. So it goes all the time. And we're kind of hoping that by keeping the weeds 100% cut off all the time, that they're not allowed to grow any, like there's no foliar growth on them. So eventually they're going to die because they can't they can't soak in any energy, mm -hmm. right? So that's kind of the thought. Um, you've also been trying out the uh, new Bonide lawn weed brew. There's a hose end sprayer you can hook yeah, it to. Yeah, which um, I'm finding it, when you're spot spraying, I really like it. I, mm -hmm. I think it works very well. I think when you've got as much as we have out there, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would recommend it for that type of application. So like if you have a lot of, like if your grass is 50% weeds, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'd recommend it for that application, but mm -hmm. if you have a pretty nice lawn and you're just trying to spray out dandelions or other things like that, mm -hmm. it's been working great in the other areas of the lawn. So mm -hmm. there you go. Cool. Cynthia said, I was just thinking that it had been a while since you had planted at your parents. Thanks for making my day. Also, do you guys still plant the downtown pots? We do not. So uh, right about the time Benjamin was born, I kind of realized like I can't do this anymore. I can't like be as much of pre as present as I want to be as a mom and still do what we're doing here filming and all the projects that we're currently going on plus you know heading that up still there was just no way I helped my mom a few times plant like she mm -hmm. decided I told her I'm like I could either try to see if the city wants to to tackle this or if you want to head it up that's great or we can just pull the pots um and because it was a it was a beast job we could be involved if they switch to self-watering pots yeah they, right now it's done by an employee of the city yeah. and it's... They need, to, they need to either put in the water infrastructure yeah. to water them. There's no drip down there, which... But they, there could be. They, That's yeah, what they kills just me is they just tore a, it up. Yeah, they just tore it up and did not put drip in. They put in um, bump outs in... Like areas to plant at yeah, the end of each block with I no I was drip. actually working with the city manager to like plan the plants that were going to go in there. And then I found out that they didn't install water. And I was like, we're what? out. Yeah, we're not doing that. We're totally mm -hmm. not going to be involved High in a desert, project without water. Well, 100 and whatever plus degrees in, like, in, for weeks. Yeah. In the middle of this hot concrete, like, roads with exhaust and all that stuff. I mean, you cannot take a tank down. I mean, it would take days to water that stuff. Yeah. I know we're totally throwing shade at our city right <laughs> now, but that was a decision that we were but like, But you know what? Ah. There's all sorts of political decisions that have to be made. And so I don't want to judge them too hard because I know how things go. And it's like, well, we only had the money for this. And so we decided to go ahead with it, even though it wasn't what we wanted. Um, but it is it is sort of disappointing because now we've got these bump outs. There's with no, no point plants. in having them. Yeah, it's just if um, gravel. You can't water them. Yeah. And that doesn't actually improve the look of your city. In it my opinion, it actually makes it harder to navigate. And it eliminated two spots on the end of each. Two was it two spots or just one spot on the end of each block? Which it can be hard to find parking down there mm -hmm. at times. Yeah. So you're just looking at this gravel pit. Yeah. Thinking. Christina said, did you lighten your hair again? No, the sun does that for me. The more I'm out in the sun, the blonder it gets. And it's usually like, <laughs> you can tell my head's like down a lot because it gets really blonde like right here. But when you're, when the sun is shining on it, it's like a penny. Yeah, it looks like a copper penny. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter like if I color my hair differently, like mm -hmm. a different shade or if I do it like darker brown, it always turns copper. Like almost immediately the sun hits it and it's just like 
don't color your hair anymore. <laughs> I do the roots though now, <laughs> a little bit. In fact, well, no, okay. <laughs> it's <just> okay. <laughs> Jody said, do your parents uh, have helped keep up with their garden? They do on occasion. They don't have any like consistent person that goes out. However, my sister and her husband are moving back to the valley from Washington. And so she's gonna be working down at the garden center now a little bit more. And I think she's gonna work there one day a week which I think is so great. If my parents are gonna still work full time and have that yard, I think that they should definitely, like you have to decide um, where you want to spend your time, mm -hmm. you know? And is it worth it for you to be down there and have somebody help you with those things that maybe you don't need to necessarily be doing? Like, you know, we have Paul who helps me with, well, with like weed control in the cut flower garden and he helps me with irrigation issues and stuff that I don't necessarily need to be doing. I enjoy doing a bulk of, of the garden chores out there. He also helped me plant all of our bulbs last year. Like I planted some, mm -hmm. but I was also seven months pregnant with three ribs out. So like you kind of have to decide what's worth it to you and where you want to spend your time mm -hmm. and where you want to budget for extra help um, anyway. So that was not the question really, but kind of, I but digress. But they, they do have help on They occasion. do, yeah. And they'll like hire a crew to come out in the sp like spring or fall to do the clean out. You know, the big, like the big um, clean out of the mm. year, um, which I think is smart. Uh, Lisa said, love your parents' garden. How do you keep the edges of beds so sharp without any type of edging barrier involved? Just upkeep, like straight shovel. Uh, straight shovel hand. or... or oh, an uh, edger or a, a trimmer. A trimmer turned yeah. upside down. Yeah, which they probably... Does my dad do that? I think he does. Yeah, I think that's what yeah. he does. Uh, Severin said, I've heard you briefly mention some basics on garden design, such as start with winter interest using blue, red, green, and yellow in the flower bed. Will you be able to go into more detail with the design beginnings of the flower bed on the new property? I think naturally we'll probably be covering some of that stuff. I don't know that I'll be doing like a how to design a garden or how to design a flower bed like titled video mm -hmm. because I think that space is going to be so it's going to evolve so slowly really in like different i mean it's not evolving slowly it feels like it because it's not a lot of tangible results right mm -hmm. now um but i think when we go in it'll be well, kind of so spotty be, like kitten miss in different areas we're gonna be planting a lot of the trees tomorrow. uh tomorrow mm -hmm. yeah Tree. which is exciting yeah but i think you have to cope with a, a plan that you like a design so you have to draw something out and keep doing revisions until you're like sort of happy you don't have to draw it out we've got those trees and we just do. set them out there i think you've got to well i suppose if it's a small enough space you don't have to do a drawing but if you're not gonna do a drawing you really have to start with the right things first like shade infrastructure like your... infrastructure first yeah water um, all of that sort of thing first. Uh, pathways, like how are you gonna navigate your space? How is it gonna be easiest for you? Are you gonna make your pathways wide enough? That sort of thing. Um, and then definitely winter structure, like big evergreens and shade, shade mm -hmm. trees, those things that you want to kind of be the, like the presence of that garden in the end. And then you start working your way down from there. Mm -hmm. You know, like more specimen type evergreens that stay smaller, maybe smaller trees, like ornamental flowering things, and then shrubs, large shrubs. Smaller shrubs, perennials, annuals. Mm -hmm. Just work your way. Work your way down. And I feel like not everybody goes in, like we're not going in and doing an entire flower bed all at one time. And so you're able to do it slow enough to where you're able to really assess your space after each step mm -hmm. and realize like, okay, I've got these deciduous trees in there. I have room for one more over here, or I really need something that has some red leaves here, you know, so you can kind of, but again, there goes the garden design part of it where I'm like, ugh. <laughs> Okay, next video was digging up and moving 34 hostas. So in that video, I realized randomly that I had 34 hostas still around our gazebo. I had already gone in and dug up so many perennials and I think the hostas just hadn't broken dormancy yet. And it just kind of, there's so much going on, I just kind of forgot. And then the autumn frost ones around the pine, I didn't even figure that they had lived through the pine demolition. So I didn't even think that they were still there. Anyway, I wanted to get them moved before the gazebo's gone. Um, for the love of Pete, this is the top comment, said, each morning I look forward to that pleasant, hey guys, how's it going? Um, as I settle in to take a virtual stroll through a now familiar and favorite garden, how amazing is it that we can gather from all across this country and countries around the world to enjoy this together? That really is nice pretty comment. amazing. That I mean, It's such a small world, it feels like now. Like yeah. It feels like we're so much more connected to people. The top just... comments are always so positive. I know. Bianca said, I heard hostas are edible. Have you tried them? I have not. What part of the hosta is it is edible? 
I'm gonna look it up real quick. That doesn't sound right. Hostas are edible when young and sheltering when older. In fact, the Japanese have been eating hostas safely for centuries, known as yuru, yururi. They're commonly boiled, fried in tempura, or eaten raw. With a flavor reminiscent of lettuce and asparagus, they can easily be substituted in salads. I don't think I'll be trying hostas anytime soon, but I didn't know that. That's interesting. Kim said, love your hostas and have several myself. I noticed that you do not plan, plant a stilby. Is it because of your area or are you not a fan? No, I love a stilby, but it is such a water hog. It needs so much water to be happy here um, that I just kind of shy away from it a bit. Uh, Greta and Brent said, hello, I have a Patriot and wide brim hostas growing in a planter. How long can I keep them growing in that container? For quite a long time. Hostas can survive in containers for for a while. It depends on, of course, the size of your container, um, what kind of winters you have, how you store them during the winter and so forth. I've got hostas that are in that big pot with my uh, Japanese maple that have been there for three years. It's a giant pot, so um, they're very happy in there. So I just, I think it just depends on a few different factors, but they're typically very winter hardy. Most of them hardy down to like a zone three or four, I think. And um, so they can winter over in containers for quite a long time. Kelly said, your garden is absolutely gorgeous, thank you. Do you ever divide your hostas, and if so, how big do you let them get before you do that? Also, what advice can you give me about weed control? We have one and a half acres outside the Portland area, and every spring I battle weeds for months. I wanna focus on beautifying, not pulling weeds. Um, okay, so first question was, do I ever divide hostas? Yes, I do, and you'll notice sometimes that like the hostas is no longer coming up just from one location. It's kind of coming up like from a couple different locations out of that same wherever you planted that, that one plant. Um, so you can dig it up and cut those pieces out and, and plant them individually. In fact, when I dug up the hostas, a couple of them just kind of naturally fell apart. And so I was able to plant them in different locations. So in the end, I actually planted more than 34 hostas um, when you consider the divisions. And then about weed control. So we've kind of showed several different ways that we battle weeds. Um, we've done a video on how we take care of it in the gravel. We've been trying the dead weed brew out, which has been working really nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but we've done a, a video prior to us trying that. We'll link that down below. In terms of garden beds, we've also done a video about how I zone our garden, how I organize it to where we can always stay on top of it and it never becomes a huge, humongous burden um, or overwhelming. And so we'll link that down below as well. It's basically just chunking your garden up in as many days of the week that you want to dedicate to garden work. Um, of course, the more days you dedicate, the less amount of time you get to, you work in it every day doing that chore. Um, so like for ours, we have it in five zones so that every day of the week, the working week, a zone gets looked at for weeds and insect issues, deadheading and so forth. And you just have to focus on that one zone, that's it. You can look at all the rest of the zones, you can see work that needs to be done, but you don't have to think about it until it's that day's zone, uh, which is nice because it kind of releases you to just focus on the task at hand. I find it has been really helpful, and that way, if you're uh, addressing every zone once a week, then it never has a chance to get out of control, ever, because you've got it organized from the very beginning. Anyway, I went into more detail about that in the video, so we'll link that down below for you. Joy said, looks like we've got a bunch of sunflowers coming up. Better hide them from Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's, yeah. And then Joy said, poor Aaron, looking up the statute of limitations on sunflower guilt. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we had some volunteer sunflowers. Was that last year? Uh -huh, I think so. Yeah, that came up in front of our gazebo and I just let them go because I was like, oh, it's like a serendipitous thing when that happens. Like it's just such a, a magical when the garden kind of does its thing. It's not magical at all. It is it's magical just like because completely out of place. I didn't plant and... those there. That's magic, Aaron. Uh... Anyway, I let them come up and they were starting to bloom and Aaron tore them out. Killed them. Yep. You got a lot of heat over that. I did. Mm -hmm. Does it, did it ruffle your feathers at all? No, not at all. Diane said, I have to give Ken a big shout out. I wonder if he, when he's editing, does he think to himself, this is going to look so cool. The viewers are going to dig this. <laughs> I think he, he does actually. Yeah. Well, sometimes he hands it to us and he's like, I don't know if you're going to like this. Feel free. Because he'll add in like little funny things a lot. Um, and he'll do a lot of things that are for our eyes only too. Like yeah. he'll put markers. And he'll uh, tell us like, make sure you watch that. Delete it. Yeah, <laughs> you delete know, that but, section because he just yeah. thinks it's something funny. Yeah. Um, but no, he does a really good job. I actually really loved the music he put in the, uh, he's been using recently. 
Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Bridget said, I know that much of your garden is dug up and feels chaotic, but watching this video highlighted just how incredibly beautiful so much of your garden still is. Seeing all that beauty inspires me when I look at all the work that needs to be done in my little garden. Thank you for saying that because it is, it is a little hard when two large areas and key areas of your garden are torn up and the gazebo area isn't even torn up yet. Like it doesn't look great because we've been moving plants around there's drip tube like cut and you know it's kind of chaos but it's about ready to look yeah I, I i can't even imagine what that space is going to look like without that imposing structure you know because the hartley um it won't be long and the hartley will be up but the hartley will be quite a bit shorter right because that that would be a much smaller structure well and it won't look so tall just because that roof is enormous and it's darkly colored so it looks I mean, it just looks huge. And then the Hartley is going to be like the white metal with glass. So it's not going to even look, I don't know. It's just going to be really interesting. <laughs> and I am thankful for the spots of our garden that are still together. I mean, you'll probably see a lot more pictures and things like that from those spots this year, just because those are what was kind of bringing me peace through all of the chaos that's going on. It's exciting chaos, but it's still chaos. <laughs> Stephanie said, what you and your husband do is amazing and I'm so thankful for this channel. Um, thank you for saying that. Question, my boyfriend was tasked to dig up a few well-established hostas and broke two shovels in the process. Wow. Yeah. Were you using a special hosta shovel in your video and is that necessary? Any tips for said, uh, said sad hosta boy? <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of shovels you have, but breaking you know, them, digging up hostas? It's a couple years old now, but um, the Fiskars one, it's like a pro, a pro shovel. Yeah. There's something about pro in the name. And it's got big step treads on the, on the, Yeah, I and like that, that has been a really beast shovel well, for us. I dug the red you butt You can hang up. off of it. I did. Like I clung to that shovel trying to get that red, you didn't include that in the video, but I was like hanging off the shovel. No part of me was touching the ground, trying to get that red bud dug up and that shovel just remained. Yeah, and it's not an expensive shovel, is it? It looks like it's $61.12. What a weird number on mm -hmm. Amazon. It's called a Fiskars Pro Digging Shovel. There you go. Link it down below? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Caesar said, Laura struggling with Google's assistant is me every single day. <laughs> and then I got to thinking, I was trying to, uh, I was trying to voice search for a Clematis vines and maybe it would pick up, is it Clematis? Is that how people say it? Yeah, a lot of people say Clematis. I'm gonna try it. Are Clematis vines poisonous? It picked me up perfectly fine. So I'm just pronouncing Clematis wrong. Clematis, Clematis. I will probably never call it Clematis ever. There's a fly in here, that's what it was. It's like moving slow. Okay, Shay said, after watching Laura for just over a year, I now have several hostas, limelights, Clematis, Clematis, and David Austin roses. This year, I'm also finding worms in my soil for the first time in three years. I believe I am so successful because of this channel. Even though I'm fairly new at gardening, I feel like professional because of all the knowledge I've retained from Laura. I'm so thankful for all the hard work you and Aaron do daily to provide such help helpful views for us. Uh, okay, next video is planting a few more perennials in my parents' garden. So when we were out there planting that first flower bed, I actually took some extra plants out there because I thought, oh, there's, there was a few areas of my mom and I had, I had walked through and um, found. I didn't have time to plant them that day, so we came back another day to finish it. Um, anyway, I took out some yarrow and more hookahs, some more penstemon, some sedum, sedums, two different varieties. Yeah, I think that was it. Maureen said, oh, and I also talked about, this is the first comment too, this was the top comment. I think you should do a tour of the garden with your mom as a Mother's Day post. It would be perfect. I love informative videos. Yes, so at the very beginning of that video, I talked about how like we do usually do a tour of my parents' garden at least once a season, um, and, or once a growing season, I guess you could say, once a year. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to ask my mom. I asked her if she would do a tour with me, if she would mic up and do the tour so that we could get her perspective because it's probably different than mine. I mean, I grew up in that garden and was there for a lot of the changes, but I wasn't in it like she was. She was making the decisions and she and my, parent, my dad both were. Um, it's kind of their, it's their joint project for sure. Um, anyway, she said that she would. So that would be a really fun Mother's Day, like special Mother's Day video. Yeah. People love that, I think. Uh, Janine said, would love a tour of your mom's garden with her included. Have you ever included drone footage of your parents' garden? That would be interesting. We have, you know, the thing is that they have so many trees now. It's so like- It's like uh, a it's, blob of trees and you can yeah, see the swimming pool and yeah, like the roof really of the not, house. I wouldn't say it's wooded, but, um, but there are so many trees that it, 
it's not that interesting of a right. look from above. Which is so unfortunate because it's such an interesting garden, but I think it is such because it's so yeah. mature. Yeah. Tori said, coiling a pose by hand is for suckers. <laughs> Love it. You make my day. I think there was a segment of you who took it as the joke it was, and there were a few people who took me seriously. <laughs> It was a joke. I still uh, coil up some of my hoses here. I don't have a hose link on every single hose at our house. They are awesome. Um, but it's kind of like a running joke. My dad, at one point, I don't know if he got it from a movie or what. Yeah, he would say, payment plans are for suckers. Yeah. <laughs> Which, is, Which is funny in and of itself. Yeah. I, there's going to be people that are offended by that too, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> Most of us don't live life without a payment plan. Everybody of some has kind. payment plans. <laughs> yeah. But I think. You know, maybe that's what makes it funny is that like you kind of everybody wishes that they didn't have payment plans, yeah. and they kind of realize that. Well, you like, pay so much. I mean, yeah, you, you know that is... you're getting suckered in. Like if you yeah. if you're just perpetually keeping a credit card balance, you kind of know that like they're making money off. They're you. making money off me, and yeah. yeah but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> coiling up hoses is the worst, though. Like it is. Yeah. Now I stopped coil a hose up every single day. <laughs> um, and it's not for not offering my parents a hose link. There was a comment I did see, like, how, like, how dare you have so many hose links at your own house and you didn't even <laughs> give one to your parents? I tried. So... So there. Yeah. We actually went out there to film a video. Do you yeah, remember? We took they, the hose link out there. Yeah, and they had nowhere for us to install it. Like, there was no solid surface i think there was a fence near one of the hose faucets but it was at the back of a flower bed and my mom was like oh i don't know pulling that hose out it's gonna rake on a bunch of the plants so what they do is they actually have the hose like running through the flower bed and then a coil like on the walkway yeah um so yeah i told her if you want to sink some posts somewhere like if if you feel like it would be worth it to you on any of your hoses we'll bring a hose link out and install it for you and we did install one at, at your parents house yeah, and we installed one in Andrews. Yeah. So to whoever <laughs> so that comment nanner, was. Nanner, nanner, yeah. Nanner. Yeah. Um, Lori said, said, wait, what? A Laura and Susan duo tour? That is going to be awesome. Um, can't wait. The soil in your parents' garden looks so dark and rich. Is it vastly different than your soil at your home? Yes. They can grow hydrangeas and have them turn blue without acidifying the soil. It's weird. It's super weird because this whole valley is high pH. And it's like their little hilltop is like this little ah, of like soil magic. They have a ton of rocks in their soil. So they do have like, there's the trade off, but they do have a lot of good soil. Now they've been working on it for a lot of years too because they, um, they mulch with compost or, you know, yeah, yeah they mulch with compost. Um, I think that's pretty much it though but I mean like lots of years of mulching with compost and then using or you know spoma is what they've been using for yeah. as long as I can remember um that's what you get yep after a certain amount of time you'll have some nice soil so maybe after 30 years we'll have some really nice soil here yeah but people are like it looks like you're planting on Mars yeah it does on our new property it's pretty bad um Cynthia said I can remember how to run on those rocks so I don't hurt, hurt my feet yeah so I was talking about how like they've got a lot of um, paver pathways, but they're not like manufactured pavers or like perfectly cut pavers. They're pavers, rocks we went and dug out of the mountainside up in the mountains. <laughs> um, and, and or some of them were already there. And I think that's what they did too. You just hook a trailer up and you can buy a permit. It's like a $5 permit and you can go up to specific areas and gather rocks. So none of them were perfect. And so I learned as a kid how I could run as fast as possible through the yard on these rocks and I knew exactly where to put my feet to where I wouldn't hurt my feet or stub my toe or whatever. And I can still remember it because I was walking through with Benjamin the other day, um, barefoot. I'm like, I, dang, that's so weird. It just kind of like threw me back. Muscle memory. Yeah. Um, you seem to have had a magical childhood. Kudos to your parents for doing such a great job. I feel like I did. Do you feel like you did? I feel like we were very lucky and blessed to have... Yeah, I wouldn't call it magical. I mean, my parents were very poor <laughs> for a lot of my childhood. You had a lot... You have a lot of fun memories. Your parents, my parents didn't, didn't have, money, have money, either. money either. Yeah, yeah. I had a very good childhood. I don't know that I would call it magical. But I, I feel like I, mine I was a, magical. I, I mean, mean, like, my parents didn't let me have a Nintendo, okay? So, like, how well, magical reason, can it be? Oh, jeez. <laughs> such a... That's such a... <laughs> Aaron answer. Um, we had one, but my parents were mad because my aunt and uncle bought it for us for yeah. Christmas or bought it for my brother, I think, for Christmas one year. And it was something my parents didn't want us to have. They wanted us to like cultivate our 
imaginations and spend time outside and we didn't have screens like kids have now just naturally we just there weren't they weren't around. they didn't exist um so we did a lot outside i can't believe like we kind of got to live at a really cool time like we got to grow up before the internet yeah it's true. and then we get to see like the benefit that the internet does bring but also the sorrow that the internet does bring yeah. like there's pros and cons to all of it but we got to like live on both sides of it yeah and i like hopefully we're cultivating the good side of the internet right now yeah, I hope so. I mean, we so. derive our income from it. So, yeah. you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, me like, uh, um. <laughs> I don't exactly want it to go away, but at the right. same time, like, you know, if, if everybody just gets together and tries to make it positive, positive then... Mm-hmm. No, I spent so much time outside. I remember specifically, like, by our shed. There's, like, a little um, embankment up to the driveway, and there's uh, native grasses growing there, and I remember spending a ton of time right on that embankment making grass dolls. Like, just by myself out there and I would use pieces of grass as my twine and I would make grass dolls. Do kids build forts anymore? Like we did, it feels like that's all we did all summer was build like tree forts Mm -hmm. and we'd make extra levels and... Mm -hmm. I hope kids do that still. We did all kinds of random stuff, boy. It's fun to think about actually. I also remember my parents sending me out to grain the cows when we had bulls, like mean bulls. And I'm like this nine-year-old little girl running through the, I mean, running through the pasture because a bull is chasing you. And like you would figure out the exact, like you would have a cake of hay and you would toss it as far as you could to try to distract him. And then you would just take off at a dead sprint across the pasture trying to make it to the barn (laughs) in time so you don't get trampled by this bull. Like I would probably never let my kids do that because I I don't know. I think parenting was different back when we were little too. Um, Yeah. I remember getting snapped across the forehead with hot wire too and it threw me right down onto my back, like knocked uh, yeah, knocked me out. It doesn't affect you. No, it doesn't. I can just hold on to it. I can feel it. It doesn't hurt, though. Julia said, I haven't seen Samantha Grace in a while. Can you show her to us soon? I did post a picture of her like a week ago or so. Super cute. She is such a delight. Um, but she's oftentimes napping and or like we try to keep her to a pretty good schedule. She's always nearby us. Like we can see her whenever we want and we do see her a lot during the day. In fact, when she like gets fussy, like before a nap or whatever, I like to be the one who gets to go like comfort her down and like, I don't know. I feel very lucky that way that she gets to be so close. But anyway, I don't often include her in video projects because I don't want to wreck her schedule because if I wreck her schedule, then it's going to wreck our night schedule. And right now it's so glorious. Like it's getting, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. She's never been a hard one. There's been a couple of hard nights, but not like with Benjamin, it was a different experience. But like last night, Aaron got up one time. The night before I got up one time, we just take turns. And so like last night I got to stay, I didn't have to get out of bed. I woke up when she woke up, but I didn't have to get out of bed. And that's like major yeah. for your day. Uh, Rena said, do you miss having different levels in your own garden? Thank you for taking us along. I learned so much. Um, so at first it was hard because I'm like, I have this ginormous flat piece of ground and that's really hard to get intimate, um, small, cozy kind of areas in. Uh, but there are pros and cons to both. Like my parents' garden is a very different look from mine in that it's very mature and it's on a hill, so it's terraced. Um, and I love that, but it's incredibly difficult to maneuver it. Uh, in, with equipment, getting tools in and out, um, if you want to use a tiller or a whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. like some spots you just can't do that in their garden. And it's a lot of manual labor. And I think about like as my parents get older, and they've talked about it a lot too, like what are we going to do to navigate all of these stairs? and um, so forth. Uh, and that would be difficult. And so I don't miss that. I do like ours that it's super easy to navigate. It's super open, which I appreciate because I'm a very cluster. I get claustrophobic so easy, not in their garden, but I do like having large areas that are open. Open. I mean, I just need that. Um, so I don't know, but then sometimes I'm like, dang it, I'm never going to get that like super intimate, but we have it in some areas like the fireplace area. So I think we can work on a few spots and make them like that, but I do like having some expansive space. Uh, Bepuman said, could you please tell us what type those peachy centered daffodils are? Yes, I actually put, I put a note in the video, Erin, and it didn't get added in. You didn't add in my names. So I think the the, um, daffodils are Salome and the tulips were Chopin. Is that how you say it, Chopin? 
C H O P I N looks like Chopin, but it's hmm. pronounced differently. I don't know. We'll we'll put those on the screen this time. Uh, Deep Sea said, "Why do you waste your money on annuals if they don't grow back? It is not a waste." <laughs> I can see where you're coming from because you know some people like they just want to have things that will return every single year, and then that way you feel like you're putting your money into something that's worthwhile. But for us. Annuals are absolutely worthwhile because they're really the only thing that provides you constant color throughout the entire season. And like definitely don't have to plant annuals on the scale that we do for projects and things. Um, I used to plant a lot less of them, but just like little pockets here and there where I knew I could expect some color and it just feeds our soul. And that's never a waste to have those kinds of things in your garden to me. I know there are different perspectives clearly. <laughs> On that. Uh, Sanjo said, are your eyes really this color? That was asked a lot and I think I was wearing this shirt. I was wearing blue and in certain lights, certain days my eyes just look more blue. I wear a lot of black so maybe like wearing blue makes my eyes more blue but that they're the same color all the time. I don't wear any contacts, contacts or, anything. or anything that make them a different color. Okay, last video from the week this week was how I grow artichokes. So I've grown artichokes for several years. It's kind of hit and miss for us because they're a super long season crop and they're not a perennial in our area. Um, but I actually got some to fruit last year for me. And so I just kind of shared how I grow artichokes here as an annual. Um, and they're a beautiful plant. We planted, Benjamin and I planted 22 of them in our flower garden space. And then I recently, in the winter sowing seedling video, planted three around our chicken coop. So it'll be fun to see the difference in how they grow and so forth. But top comment was from Cotswold Gardener. Um, Hi, Laura, watching your channel has changed my life. I went to horticultural college 20 years ago and gained my RHS qualification, but then had kids and ended up working in an office. Fast forward to 2020, the pandemic hit and my husband and I were made redundant. So after watching you for four years and re realizing this is what I really want to do with my life, I started my gardening business. Now I'm coming up to my first year anniversary in June and I couldn't be happier. So thank you for being such an inspiration. Oh, that's such a nice comment. I know, like gives me all the feels. Like, oh. That's amazing. Congratulations on the first year of your business. Uh, Bianca said it would be so gorgeous if you left one bloom of artichoke per plant and had a row of bobbing artichokes. By bobbing, do you mean like bent over from the wind? Because that's what they would be out there. That's what they look like right now. It's been windy for the past three days and it happened. I think the artichokes were in the ground for maybe two full days at sort of a dull roar with the wind and then it just like hit. Oh, I'm so sick of the wind, you guys. It's it's usually not this bad. Like we usually through the summer get one good windstorm a week, um, but this has been like the spring of wind and it's day after day after day of wind. I was gonna plant all of my snapdragon seedlings out last Saturday and then I looked at the weather and I could tell like, okay, so this Thursday we have a forecast of 88. Friday, high is 64. A drop of 24 degrees, right? 24 means it'll get windy. Yeah, yeah. We'll have major winds on Thursday night. So I'm like, so should I wait to plant my snapdragons out or do I just, just do it and see what happens? And uh, I don't know, you can only wait so long. And last year I planted everything so late that I feel like maybe if I just hold on, it'll be fine. Yeah. We'll just focus on getting dahlias in the ground. Those are tubers so that can be underneath the soil and be fine for a while. Um, Jean said, I heard you say you give your seedlings fertilizer. Is this before you plant them outside? Yes, so we start giving them that liquid bloom fertilizer, usually at half strength when they've, um, after they put on their first set of true leaves and they've put on a little bit of growth, I'll give them half strength. And then as they grow bigger, we'll just give them regular strength. I'm not super diligent about it. I could be better and I could have stronger seedlings, um, but it is a good idea to do it because your seedling mix only has so much, you know, nutrients in it. Anyway, Jay's Holiday Wonderland said, so when are you gonna plant up those bird-shaped boxwoods? I'm curious to see what you plant with them and how you use them. I have those two bird-shaped boxwoods in our greenhouse. I bought them last year and they sat in their nursery cans and they're still in their nursery cans. They look amazing actually. They looked a little rough. One of them in particular did when I bought it and they've got really beautiful new growth. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. That's like a classic buying something without knowing how you're gonna use well, it. Well, they're so specific, you know, like a topiary, animal is a very specific thing and you kind of want to cite it somewhere like i'd love to tuck them into an actual flower bed like on the edge somewhere to where you're walking along and then you're like oh yeah there's some there's some birds in there <laughs> you know um i probably won't keep them in containers i'll probably put them in the ground somewhere mama q lawson said the guitar music in this video was amazing just beautiful who is it 
I don't know. I don't know either. I liked it a lot. I thought it was like, I don't know. It was like calming a little mm -hmm. bit, but it had movement mm -hmm. a little bit. I don't know. Nash Nash said that guitar is horrible. Well, <laughs> I guess you win some and you lose some. Angela said off topic question, sort of in your vegetable garden by your house. Why didn't you put a center feature you had mentioned doing in an earlier video? Was it lack of space or ran out of time? Um, you know, I put that planter in there for a while just because I had it. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do in there. I don't think I want it to be a fountain. We get too much wind. I would constantly be filling that fountain up. I don't really want it to be a container because I don't want more fluff right there. I need it to be something like hardscape ish. Mm -hmm. um, so I just don't know. Right now it's very nice that it's open because I can just cruise through there with the hose. I can cruise there through there with a the cart, even though I did leave it big enough to get around, but I can just go straight <laughs> through there, which is nice. I don't know, we'll figure it out at some point. I wonder if I did like some kind of uh, in-ground fountain, like a, like one, like almost like a circle that has water that just runs on the outside, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, right. into a reservoir, so yeah. it's not something that's shooting up and then blowing off. Right. Uh, and then I don't have, I don't know, like I don't have to clean out any leaves or anything like that. That'd be kind of a cool look right Yeah, it there. would be, it would be fun. Sandy said, you always seem so busy, how do you keep up? Well, I don't keep up 100%. There's always so much to do here and there's always a running list of projects. Um, and yeah, I mean like, for example, I posted a picture of our balcony area, like underneath our balcony in Versailles and I sell Christmas pillows out. <laughs> I'm never on top of it, um, but we do have a lot of good help right now. So Paul, you know, he is outside. He is the backbone of our garden. He's super, super helpful to us in so many different ways. Um, he's got a really, like, he's got a lot of common sense. He's got a lot of, like, he can fix anything. He's just one of those, like, gifted people in that area. And then he's also very efficient at what he does. So, like, so thankful to have him outside. And then we have other helpers that come in, not full-time positions or anything, but people who come in and help us with other things. Um, and then, you know, we've had Trisha who helps us clean our house and has since the very beginning. Um, in fact, that's the only thing Aaron and I fought about in the very beginning of our marriage was cleaning because I wanted it done more often and he didn't want to do it <laughs> that often. And we were doing it ourselves, of course. So of course I'm like, why aren't you helping me more? You know, and this house is gross. And you're like, just relax, you know, <laughs> anyway. So we decided we don't fight about anything else in our in our life here. Let's just budget to have somebody help us clean. And that way it eliminates the problem. We don't have to fight about it anymore. And so trisha has been with us for 12 years, something like that. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. And she and her husband, Eddie, actually, like Eddie built it, our root cellar. He's building our um, raspberry beds. He did the wainscoat. Chicken coop. He did the chicken coop. He does the wainscoat in Benjamin's nursery. Um, they are like the most handy, gifted people. And I'm so like, I'm so thankful for everybody we have in our life. Uh, Joy said, understatement of the year, everything did pretty well out here last year. <laughs> that is kind of true. Everything did so well out in our cut flower garden. And I kind of feel because I feel a little bit of pressure this year because of how well it did. But we just threw stuff out there and maybe that's the thing. Maybe I need to stop stressing about it a little bit and stop stressing about the wind and just it is what it is. Like, we'll just throw stuff out there. We'll see what happens. We're all dealing with stuff, weather-wise or soil-wise or whatever. And like, I can't control everything. I can't control the wind. So if it comes and wrecks all my sweet peas, I did the best I could. Mm -hmm. Grew them up to a really pretty stage. The wind took them and I can't control that. Um, so we'll just put something else there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, everything last year, the sunflowers were gorgeous. We got over 500 squash and pumpkins in the end. Um, like 75 or 100 watermelons, something like that. I mean, like insane amount of crops and dahlias were amazing. <sighs> I hope that this year is just even a fraction of what it was last year. It looks like that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful to hear some of these answers. Uh, we do have a lot of fun projects coming up this week. Like Aaron said, we have an auger coming tomorrow. I think you said that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Anyway, if you didn't, we have a big auger coming tomorrow so we can get the trees that are sitting up in the new property planted. Um, we've kind of walked out our pathway up there. Aaron had me mark it out with paint like where I wanted the center of the walkway-ish. And then he got a piece of 15 foot pipe and kind of went along that walkway, like marked the center of the pipe and then put flags along where the pathways are gonna be. Cause we are gonna do grass. Aaron's getting his grass pathways out there, which I do think will look really pretty. Um, and it will be cooling. Mm -hmm. And you know, we stood out there, some people came over on Friday to kind of look at the, look at our garden and we were standing in the mulch and it was a really sunny day and it was hot and it wasn't even a hot day. And I thought, oh man, 
standing here on the mulch when it's 105 or 108 degrees, it's gonna be killer out mm -hmm. here. Uh, and it, I remember it was, even on the dirt last year, it was hot through my vans. Like it burned my feet. It was so hot out there. Um, so grass will be nice. Anyway, so now we know where our pathways are and we can plant trees and yeah. So we're gonna show you that this week. I um, hope you guys are all having a great day and I hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.